All right. Hello. We are live. Welcome to the Sunshine State Happy Hour, powered by Florida Beer Blog and the Florida Beer Podcast. This is Dave, your host and author. Steve is coming. I promise he will be here momentarily. But I'd like to take a few seconds right now, and I'm actually going to start by thinking Pumpkin Pie Boutique. They are an awesome hand-thrown pottery artist here in South Florida. She does a lot of amazing work. I even had some of her work available at my wedding, which is really cool. And following her on Facebook, one of the things that she mentioned was something called Haunted Honey. And I'm not totally sure what that was. And so I took a look. And apparently there is a special brand of honey from South Louisiana that has honey that is harvested from honeycombs that are living in crypts and mausoleums as you know if you know anything about louisiana you will know that that's basically there are no below ground anything there isn't that right craig yeah the <laughs> <laughs> grass is water <laughs> so now that Steve has joined us, we are very happy to welcome Craig Forsyth from Bee Guys, the makers, harvesters, creators, I'm not totally sure how you would want to say this, of Haunted Honey. Craig, thank you so much for coming to the show. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Steve, have you ever been to New Orleans? It's a place that I've always wanted to go to, but never had the opportunity to try. I never made it there. The closest I made was Gulfport, Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> and Craig, that's kind of another world, right? Uh, it, it, it's it's a completely different world down here. I'm not sure how family oriented this show is, but uh, <laughs> Go for they it. got. Well, we could. We, they, they got. They got everything down here. This is the. This is the party capital of the world. It, it's nice. it's, a, it's amazing the things you see down here. It's not just the. T we're, we're known for our tombs and everything else like that. As far as all of that goes, we have haunted tours every day. Um, <laughs> Not in the COVID time for the most part, but uh, it, it, it's just crazy. But when you go walk down Bourbon Street, there's it's mm -hmm. such a melting pot of people that are from all over the world, different countries. And uh, just uh, just on a Tuesday afternoon, my personal experience driving right down Bourbon Street, right along Bourbon Street, actually, saw a grown man, had to be about 300 pounds. Uh, he wasn't the skinniest guy in the world, <laughs> but... Uh, he's walking down Bourbon Street, completely dressed as Catwoman, and uh, <laughs> I'm talking the ears and everything, spandex all around, and uh, well, not spandex. I think it was leather, but uh, it, it, and that's that's just a Tuesday afternoon down here. <laughs> that's amazing. Well, <laughs> I um, it sounds a lot like Miami in a lot of ways. Unfortunately, I'll say it's more like Key West during Fantasy Fest. Key West, yeah, it seems like that. Um. But let's go ahead and kind of start off because you are technically not a beekeeper. You are a bee removal specialist. We're, and... we're both. We're both. Okay. Actually. Yeah, I can, I can explain it. But yeah, we're, uh, it, it's, a little, it's a little bit of both. The main thing that we do is bee removals, honey bee removals. We also deal with wasps, yellow jackets, bumblebees, carpenter bees, things like that. You know, any type of bee we deal with. But 90, 98% of what we deal with are honeybees on a daily basis. Uh, so, but there is a big difference between beekeeping and bee removal. And I tell this to all of our customers that need beehives removed. Because what happens is we have Joe and Johnny and Bob down the street that mm -hmm. they just got a beehive in their backyard. And anybody that says, well, these people have a bee problem, call my buddy down the street. He'll do it for $20 and a pack of beer. Uh, you know, well, uh, they don't know what they're doing, and it, it's not a it, it, it's not a good good idea to have somebody like that working on your house or your construction. Yeah. That doesn't mean that they know about construction, anything to do you know with anything else. They might know that you know between difference between a queen and honey and and boy bees and girl bees, and they might be very you know uh, educated on that part. But the way I tell every one of my customers is the same thing, and it, I, I sound like a broken record, but it's true. The, there's a big, big divide and difference between bee removal and a bee removal specialist and a beekeeper. The way I say it to everybody is the guy at the mall that with, with the with the gun. Uh, that's a, that's the security. Well, he carries a gun, and 
you know what? He's there for security. The guy on the SWAT team that carries a badge and a gun too, we all know that he's more qualified. But you know, so that's the same. That's the analogy I use because beekeepers doesn't mean that you can actually get into bee removals because there's no timeout. There's no nothing. You know, you can't just put the put the hive back together and a top on it and walk away and say, you know what, I'll deal with this another day. Uh, things aren't going the way I want them to. The bees aren't acting the way I want them to. I'm getting stung. Well, when you open up a beehive in a house, you got neighbors, you got pets, you got people going to work, coming home, kids playing out in the street. It can get bad very quickly. And if you don't know what you're doing to stop it from getting bad, when it does get bad, you can't you, you can't close that that can of worms up. So it, it 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 really is a big liability if you don't know what you're doing. Interesting. Um, so with bees, with calling some calling someone, how often is it to where you have to basically go in and destroy everything? And then how often can you go in and actually salvage something? You talk uh, about salvage beehive. Salvage a little bit of both. I actually had a situation some months ago where we had a beehive underneath our deck, and uh, I was very naive, and mm -hmm. I sprayed everything that I could Sprayed spray them. onto it. And we finally called the bee removal specialist, and they came in and said, you know, I wish you hadn't done this because they were very nice bees, and I could have taken the queen and taken them all and give them a nice new home. So to this yeah. day, I feel horrible about it. But I guess I just, I was amazed. I just assumed B equals pest destroy it all. Yeah, that's that's what everybody thinks about, honestly. And, uh, you know, pest control, That we struggle as an industry like that. There's really very little advertising that we can do because not many people know about beekeepers. You say anything about beekeepers, a lot of people go, what? what what's a beekeeper? And I, I, honestly, I don't understand that. But I said, you know, we're, we're where honey's born. That's what that's how I kind of get around that one. You know, oh, yeah, honey, honey. Now I know what you're talking about. But, uh, you know, bee removal, a lot of people don't experience that. And if they do, you know, they, they, they tend to get a lot of, you know, but throughout my throughout the course of all my years of doing this, I mean, we've done had some sticky situations with a whole bunch of different things. Uh, we, we take them out of, out of walls, floors, uh, and graves. You know, we take them out of 150 feet in the air, sometimes 300 feet in the air, different places. We've got a, a grain elevator down here. We did one at the top of the silo. Uh, it was out on an edge. We were 300 feet above the ground on top of this big silo. We're moving honeycombs. You know, and it's, uh, it, it's, it's crazy. But somebody's got to do it. <laughs> That's amazing. And um, obviously, we will talk about your particular side hustle here in a few seconds, but we're inching towards that in that when you remove a honeycomb, when you remove a hive, mm -hmm. do you get a good amount of honeycomb and honey out of that? Or are there times where it's just a complete loss and you're just basically chucking it all in the garbage? It all depends. It really all depends. Uh, Last night, for example, uh, we did a bee removal. It's actually up as a Facebook Live on our Facebook page. Uh, we put we we had a chance to put the customer actually in a bee suit, and she got to get a hands-on experience with it. And you can see that on our Facebook page at uh, Bee Guys LLC. And it, it's about an hour long. But they they were in a, a weatherboard wall. We took them out of the wall. It was about three feet worth of nest by about two feet wide three foot tall, but two foot wide. And uh, with that, we, we saved the eggs, but we also took the honey and we gave the honey to the customer. So they got about a gallon or, or so of honey. But the way everything works is it all depends on how long they've been there. It, it, bees, I, I'll say it over and over again. I'll try and only say it once, but bees are just like humans. And I have so many analogies between humans and bees that make people laugh and everything else. And it, it, some of them sound corny, but it's completely true. Uh, the, the way bees work are just like me and you. If, you. if you got to your house or your apartment and you've only been there for three or four days, well, guess what? I'm not expecting there to be you know, portraits on the walls and all kind of different rooms painted, or, or, you know, things that would happen over the course of moving in. You know, you're just getting there. You're really getting all your stuff together out of boxes. So when bees get to a place, if they've only been someplace a month, 
they're starting to make honey for themselves. They're getting, they're starting to lay eggs and they're starting to make honey for themselves because they start off with zero. They only, when they leave mama's house from the parent colony, they eat as much as they can in order to survive. They, they just eat, they just gorge Thanksgiving dinner and, and leave. So they live off of the food, off of the honey until they get to where they're at, to where they're supposed to be, new house. They can start drawing wax. They make wax from the scales from their underbelly and uh, they start putting they're putting the house together. They have to be able to put the refrigerator together in order to store the food in it. So if, they, if they're not drawing comb out, then they, they have no place to put nectar, pollen, eggs, anything. So, uh, you know, it's uh, when they're some, there for a week or so, there's really not much there. But we get nests that have been there for eight, 10 years sometimes. And, uh, you know, the longest nest I have particularly done in my career was inside of a shed ceiling. It was 16 inches wide inside of the joist line by 14 and a half feet long. And uh, that thing was monstrous. Had about 70 to 80,000 bees inside of there if I had to, if I had to, you know, estimate it. But out of that, probably got about 15 gallons of honey out of that one. And uh, we don't keep the honey, really. Uh, we feed the honey back to the bees if we can. But a lot of times the customer keeps the honey, you know, and uh, especially around this time of year, I tell, pe I tell people, well, if you're going to be a beekeeper and you've got honey, a lot more than what you're ever going to use or anything else, why don't you give it away as gifts for Christmas, you know, and it, uh, uh, whatever it may be. You know, because uh, honey's expensive. Honey can get expensive because yeah. it's hard to produce it. It's really costly to produce. Uh, the stuff that's in Walmart and, uh, you know, all the supermarkets, I don't want to say that's not real honey, but it's not 100% honey. I can say that, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. because when you when you buy a, a pound of honey, just regular everyday honey, it all depends on what part of the United States you're in. It could be eight dollars. It could be twelve dollars a pound, fifteen dollars a pound. It all it all depends. A lot of people like to say a dollar an ounce. And uh, well, 16 ounces make a pound, so that would make $16 per pound, you know. But like I said, some places are eight, so it really all depends on where you're at. But if you're if you're selling something for ten dollars ten dollars a pound, a gallon is 12 pounds. That's 120 dollars a gallon. But uh, if you're if you're buying if I'm buying uh, a pound of honey. From if you're buying a pound of honey from me that costs you twelve dollars, and you go to Walmart and you go, well, wait a second, I can get five get five pounds of honey for twelve dollars in this jar here. Why are you so high? You, you're trying to rob me. You know, you, it, well, it's not the same product. What they do is, you know, uh, another analogy is how many oranges does it take to make a carton of orange juice? Any idea? Um, I, was, I would say that it depends on what else you're going to put in the carton. Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> correct. If you look on the side of it, generally it'll, it'll say uh, three natural Florida oranges uh, you, uh, were, were used and the rest is a filler. That's it. Uh, if you ever had hand squeezed lemonade from any little lemonade stand, you see them crush the lemonade, the, the lemon, and they put some some drops of lemonade in there, but then they fill it up with a carbonated filler, you know, and that's exactly what happens. Honey is the same way. What happens with honey is all of these big beekeepers. Uh, I use the one at Walmart for as an example. Uh, and I, I matter of fact, I have a I have a jar that I'd have to go off a camera to get. But uh, the, the top of it tells you that it was made in Argentina, Chile, Netherlands, Canada, USA, uh, all kind of different places. So with that, it's, a, it's crazy because they don't have beekeepers that produce that much. What they do have is companies that go buy everybody's honey, my honey, your honey, you know, and, and what they do is they send it to their factory they put it all together and they pasteurize it and uh, they, they heat it up to about 130 degrees. Once you heat honey up over about 115 degrees, it loses its natural products. Still going to taste yeah. that honey. It's still going to have the consistency of honey. You know, it, it's not really going to change too much, but it takes the, the natural great properties of raw honey out of it. And that's done because of the FDA. 
Uh, you know, the, the one thing one thing Americans are great at is complicating everything to no end. <laughs> so, so that the honey is the best food that you can have. It's the purest food that never goes bad. What I what I've got in this in this jar right here was 100% made by bees, and until all of us are dead and gone and in caskets and our bone turn to ash, this is still going to be good inside of this jar. That, that you, you can't say that about anything else. You can't say that about pumpkins, apples, anything. So this, yeah. uh, you, you, you're going against God's work, I guess you say, because <laughs> this, this here is perfect as it is, so who am I to mess with it? You know, it's withstanding the test of time. And let's actually talk about being dead and gone, because one of the things that you have a whole lot of are uh, crypts and mausoleums and above ground grave sites pretty much all over South Louisiana. And I guess <laughs> how so you get a lot of bees that take up residence in some of those locations. Is it sort of a natural home for where bees can build a hive? Yes, it is. Uh, again, bees like humans. When anybody that's watching this, I'm willing, I'm willing to bet my paycheck, unless you're homeless, you're going to go walk into a door that's probably, what, four foot wide at most, three foot wide. It's a small, ca small uh, entrance that leads into a big cavity, two, three, five bedroom house. That's where you put your sofa, your big screen TV, your refrigerator, your freezer. Well, the, the door is there and it's only small enough for you to get in. And there's a reason for that. The bees, they want a small door that leads into a big opening. They want that small door, that small crack, because they don't want to get robbed. If you take our laws away, uh, the, 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 it's, a, it's a very big uh, thing that I tell everybody. If you just take the police away, uh, in, in, in the human world, there, there's no repercussions for what you do. There's no right. There's no wrong. There's only strictly survival. If I'm the only thing standing between you and a meal, well, guess what? We're going to be fighting. And that, that's just how it is. If uh, if you, you need to steal something to survive, I'm not going to come and steal your wallet from your back pocket because you're going to be a harder fight. I'm going to want to go take it from the 95-year-old lady in a, in a wheelchair over there because it's an easier target. You see it with, with lions and gazelles and all of that. It's the strongest survive. You know, they prey on the weakest link. If you take our laws away, we're the same type of animal. You know, and you see that with crime all the time, you know, but the uh, as you're saying, is that a good place in a tomb for those bees? Without a doubt, there's li there's not really supposed to be holes in it. But over time, with the heat, natural things, cracks, things like that, there's there's holes that present themselves. And these bees find it and they go inside of this big cavity where these coffins are. And that's a huge that's a huge, huge cavity that they can start building in. They go right behind uh, inside by the coffin and they start making nests. Um, oh, so you've been What's that? nice. So you've been you, so you have these very large bee colonies, these hives in these locations, um, and obviously it's the cemetery owners that go in and ask you to remove those. How I guess did you start? Going to stumble on the idea of specifically keeping this special cemetery honey, this crypt mausoleum honey, setting that aside for yourself, and then maybe kind of starting to formulate some sort of a business plan around that. Well, I've been having this idea for years. I've been keeping bees for probably about 17 or 18 years, as, as long as I've been in this industry. And uh, about 15 of those years is how long I've been taking them out of tombs. Uh, and at first, it's, it's honey. It's just like uh, any other raw honey that hasn't been touched, that comes from a tree or anything else like that. But these come from the haunted cemeteries in New Orleans. That's where pretty much everything comes from, or right, right around South Louisiana. And uh, if you Google anything about that, you can see where you know, all the voodoo and everything else that comes around, you know, you, you kind of get it. That's part of the culture down here. But uh, the, the, the way it works is we've been removing them for years, 15 years or so. And we could have put it directly in our honey stock and tried to sell it if we wanted to. But number one, it's not ethical because uh, I wouldn't want the honey's been tested and it's fine. 
there there we put a a, a warning uh disclaimer uh, if you uh, what have you on every jar of everything and it says this is a product that is sold as novelty only because it's not intended for human consumption however 90 percent of our people that are buying this are buying us strictly to eat it you know um we have a big big following between the the, the spiritual community and the witch community pagans people like that they use it for other things besides eating but uh but anyway, for, so 15 years go by of, of removing bees from tombs, and we honey never goes bad. We I just kept keeping. I kept the wax. We kept the honey. Uh, we had some combs, but the, the, a lot of the combs over the years were just drained into liquid honey. Uh, so any combs we get are fresh for the most part. But we didn't want to put honey that came in, uh, uh, in from a, a tomb inside of something that we're going to sell to a restaurant because even though test came even though tests are fine and they say hey the honey is good and uh we don't tell people to eat it that's it but let's just let's just take for example that we sell it to a to a restaurant and somebody comes up sick come up with food poisoning and they test the honey and the honey comes back with all kind of gases chemicals or whatever in it and what's going to happen is I'm gonna have to answer as to why something like let's just let's just call it embalming fluid since that's the first thing I can come off without top of my head. Why is embalming fluid in my food? Well, I'm gonna have to answer as to why that's in my honey. Yeah, uh, and that's a big, big, big liability. Uh, you know, and but it's it, morally we never went that far. So that's how we got this big stockpile of the what we have what we call haunted honey. And for years, that's what we've been having. So that's why we've got so much of it. And I've been having this idea for about four or five years that I said, I'm going to do something with it. We're going to market it. We're going to do something with it. And it just never came to fruition. So this year, just like any other year, I said, I'm going to do something with it, you know, but with the, the real blessing, I guess you say, was COVID because mm -hmm. that actually slowed things down enough. To where I had enough time in order to get the wheels on this rolling. We started with 120 jars, and I thought that was kind of big. 120 jars and 120 labels. And let me tell you, those <laughs> jars, I thought that would be, I, I didn't want to buy that much at first because I didn't want to leave these little jars that we had that I showed you. We don't use those for anything else. That's specialty for this product. So I didn't want to have them just laying around, not going to waste and then just losing money just to say I, I put it on something uh, called Haunted and, Hunter. Uh, and, <laughs> and you started by putting this information on Facebook and just the Facebook um, activity alone. What was that like when you finally kind of released Haunted Honey out into the world? Haunted Honey came out on October 1st of 2020 at 9 p.m. And uh, I planned on having it earlier than that in the day, but things things happened and I got caught up with work, couldn't do it. But uh, it was surreal. It blew up over literally overnight because at not from 9 p.m. on the first by you you can say by the fifth we had over a half a million views of uh, just this one Facebook post that we put out, and there was not a dime of advertising not a penny of advertising that we put behind it for that type of exposure within five days uh it, it, it was amazing uh we had we had one post uh, earlier on this year about pesticides and honeybees killing honeybees that got three hundred thousand views over a course of time maybe about two months or so and that was like wow i've ne we've never had anything if we got 500 uh, views or something like that before that was kind of big because we're just a little beekeeping, you know company I guess you say and not everybody yeah. follows us or knows about us really so uh, You know, we're not we're not the NFL or, or, or the Baseball different things like that not something that everybody knows about But man a half a million views for a small little beekeeping company like that. That's pretty surreal and uh, right now we're shipping to 12 different countries and uh, every state in the United States Tell you, well, tell you what, I'll take that back. The only state, the only state we have not shipped to is Hawaii yet. How fast? Breaking up on me there. I can't hear you. <laughs> Hawaii, you got to step it up.
<laughs> so. Yeah, Dave, you're coming through choppy. So I think he used to say, how fast is your shipping? All right. How fast is the shipping? No, how fast uh, are the, the, the 120 jars, the initial the pressing of those 120 jars? Mm. How long mm -hmm. did those stick around? That stuck around less than 24 hours after we were after we marketed it. That was it was gone, and that that's actually what what caused a lot of the problems that we had. Uh, you know, as a as a growing pain, because we got jars in and they were they were just gone, and we still had orders coming in, coming in, coming in, and we couldn't fill them because we didn't have any jars. We had to wait for more jars to come in. And then we were scrambling to go get more labels made and we couldn't keep up. And between all that, you got a, a lot of these, uh, well, 90% of what we have in stock is crystallized. And that's what, that's what natural honey does over the course of time. So you just can't pour it right out. It's, it's brick solid for the most part. You have to warm it up over the course of a day or two, three days, because you can only put it up to maybe 100 degrees. And when you have a five-gallon bucket and 55-gallon uh, drums, it's a lot of real estate to cover with some heat. So it take, it's a process to, uh, to uncrystallize. So we got caught up with that, with not having enough product ready to go. So we had to decrystallize what we had. Uh, then we had to put, get the jars, put it in the jars, get the labels, label everything. And then we got to go to our sheets and look at, well, we got 300 orders we got to get out. And we, we told people that we'd have maybe a day or two worth of shipping and that was it. And it took a week and a half in order to get an order out, you know, so that put us well behind the eight ball. But now ever since October's over, the, the, the immediate shock of all of this is, is over. We still have orders coming in daily. Uh, we, we still selling plenty of it. But uh, we're caught up. We've got everything. Uh, every order gets shipped within two days for the most part, generally 24 hours. But uh, if something comes up where we can't get it out within that time frame, it's out the next day. Uh, so yeah. there, there's no hold up with that anymore. The, we have the inventory. We have everything ready to go. So we had to play catch up for a month because there was no catching up. And there's only we're, we're a company of two and a half people. You know, <laughs> and uh, I, I say the half is because I have to be the other half. I've got to do more than one person share. Uh, you know, when you own your own business, I guess that's life. But especially when uh, you're in our business, uh, you can't go out right in front of Home Depot and find somebody and say, hey, you know, uh, come beekeep with me or, or you know, anybody you, you put an ad on Craigslist or anywhere. Zip recruiter. There's not many beekeepers that you're going to find. So especially around your area or able to come help, things like that. So that's a catch 22 in, in my business. You, if you're going to have somebody help, you got to you got to find a diamond in the rough. That's actually just going to be sitting around not doing nothing uh, because the, there's not many people. Yeah. So I know that obviously you've had some people that wanted it just for the novelty of the honey, but then kind of like you mentioned earlier, the, uh, metaphysical community sort of approached you with the with needs for the honey uh, what kind of interesting conversations have you had in that direction and what uh, what have you been hearing about the honey being used for them oh uh th there's been so much uh you have no idea how many witches i talk to in a week i mean <laughs> I, I never i never thought it would be something like that uh with with the com that community uh I was I was brought up Catholic, uh, but I'm I'm not a I'm not a fanatic about anything. Uh, you know I don't talk down about people that, that have a different belief or anything else because I'm I'm pretty wide open. So, but anyway, I've never been taught what witches believe, things like that. And I never really knew that it was such a big thing. I guess you say I've heard of pagans before, but honestly, I really didn't know what they believe, things like that. Uh, my best friend is a Wiccan. And we don't really talk about it too much. So honestly, I know she's just spiritual. That's the best way I could categorize it. But man, but from what everybody's telling me, uh, I mean, I take little bits from this person, that person that says something because we get into long, drawn-out conversations. Uh, I've got one 
uh, one woman that actually did some work for us. Well, once she ordered some honey, she said uh, she's a, she's a witch, but she's in what she called the broom closet. She's not coming out from being a witch yet. <laughs> you know, nobody really knows because she doesn't want to put it out there in the world. Uh, she doesn't know how to feel about it herself. So I've got people like that. And I've also got people that call me and they're right, right off the bat that well, I'm a witch. I'm going to use this for spells. I'm going to use this in potions, uh, healing spells, different things like that. Um, I've been told this, this honey is, is very, it's extremely unique from where it comes from. But with somebody that, that has the metaphysical portion of it, uh, the ghostly portion of it, things like that, they believe, they, I hear a lot that this honey has a lot of what they call energy. It has a lot of clean energy, and it's been born between worlds. Again, this is not my words. This is what I've, what I've heard piecing together. Uh, but it said it was born between worlds, between the living and the dead. And uh, it's got it's got an energy unlike no other because of something like that, because you can't find something like that anywhere else. Now, I really don't know honestly what they use it for exactly if it's a healing spell, if it's a luck spell, um, you know, but I've, I've had uh, one specific person say, well, I'm going to put your honey into a spell, into a jar. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some wax from you, too, from the graveyard. I'm going to melt the wax down and I'm going to seal the jar with the wax. And that's going to make the spell more powerful. So, again, not my words. So if I'm getting something wrong with somebody that knows what I'm talking about, I apologize if I don't have everything down exactly right. But uh, I've never casted a spell before. <laughs> uh, closest I've ever come is Dungeons and Dragons. So, um, But obviously, this is a beer show. And you've got beers people are using honey and beers they have been doing it for quite some time um and then one of the things that i've kind of started really getting into sort of haphazardly is mead or honey wine um how many of those producers have reached out to you interested in taking a look at using your honeys for some of their recipes i honestly not many not many uh it, it would get very expensive to do that uh, but for such a bulk, for such a bulk of honey, uh, I'm not, like I said, I'm, uh, the raw honey makes the best mead and that's, I've heard that before, but I've never tasted mead before in my life. And I've also heard the darker, the honey, uh, the, the better the mead. Well, I don't know that to be true, but I've heard it. Uh, but anyway, we had an, we had a guy, uh, we never ended up selling to him. He was a very, very hard guy to get on the phone. Uh, but he called us from Michigan, and he messaged us, and he uh, he asked, uh, "Do we have do, do we have any haunted honey left?" And this was in the early days. This was probably on day three. And uh, man, I tell you what, he said, uh, he, he said, "Well, I'd like to get some from you." I asked him how much. This is all by text. I said, "How much are you? How much are you looking to get?" Oh, about three hundred to four hundred pounds. And I said, well, "Wait a second. So did you did you did you type that wrong? Uh, you know." Four, is it, you need 400 jars or four jars? I said, that, that's a bad typo, but is it exactly what do you mean? He said, no, I, I would like about at least 200, 200 to 400 pounds. And uh, that kind of took me by surprise because that's uh, uh, for somebody to think that because he doesn't know our story, you know, so right. to think that we have that much is was like absurd, I guess you say, because if, uh, if you would just do this at one hive at a time and just say, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to sell this and I've got three gallons of it, you, you know, something like that. You never, you're not close. So we have a very, very unique situation as to how we fell into this and stockpiling the honey over time. But anyway, we never did sell to him. We never even gave him a price, but he said that, uh, he said, I'm a pagan. Uh, and he was in Michigan. He said, I own a winery, a meadery and a distillery. And he said, I want to use your honey uh, in my products in order to make some new products. And he, he said, I'm not worried about cost. He said, but if, if this is real honey from where you say that it's from and, and you can kind of prove where it comes from, then he said, I, I'll take all you got, you know, and uh, because that was just one batch that he wanted between 200 and 400 pounds. Yeah. Honey yeah. is 12 pounds per gallon. So, uh, you know, around, around about 60 pounds per five gallon bucket. 
So you're you're talking about five, six, five gallon buckets. <laughs> you know, amazing. For a batch. That's amazing. You know. Um, so, so what else do you actually sell to the consumers? You've shown us a half pound jar. Um, and how much is that? And then you also have honeycomb, that's correct. Yeah, we have three different products. We've got what I showed you before. This is the top of the label. That, that's our, this is our label that we've had uh, made up by a graphic designer for us out of California. Uh, she does Absolutely love that. Us. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, uh, if I get a little bit closer to the camera, you can see, you know, on the mask, it's like New Orleans. Say, yeah. You know, it's a, it's a date. That's what, that, that's what it's for. You know, they got us going around to the, to the cemeteries, putting masks on the, on the corpses. It's getting so bad. <laughs> This is the this is the, the what we call the haunted honeycomb. We sell it inside of these four by four clear squares. You can see the the side of it exactly what it looks like on the inside, the comb wise. We hmm. tape tape it shut to where it doesn't come open and shipping. But this is four inches by four inches. This is about a pound, a uh, little bit over a pound of honey. That's what we call haunted honeycomb. Those are forty dollars a piece, and uh, the other thing that we offer—I don't have one right next to me—but it's pure beeswax that comes from the graveyards. Once the, the the honey was strained out of it, we ball it up. We don't render it. We don't separate it. We don't do anything. It's completely, completely raw. So what you get is is what you get. There's no processing of it at all. We ball it up into balls about the size of baseballs, if not a little bit smaller. And uh, we sell it. We sell that by the pound. Uh, the the what we call that's what we call graveyard gold. Uh, we have two patents on two different names: the haunted honey and uh, beekeepers. The old beekeepers, yeah, uh, you know, when they open up their beehives, they take that little hive tool and they scrape all the little wax off of the the portions of the hive where bees put wax where it's not supposed to be, and they put it in a pot. It, it, you know, it's it's called your gold pot. Uh, and that's what that's what that is. It, it's it's money being made. That's that's the old way of saying it. Uh, a, a, a little chunk of wax that's that big. The more little chunks you have, you put it in that pot, and it's still going to add up. It's kind of like saving your pennies. Your pennies are worth it too. So for the old ancestors that used to be beekeepers, farmers, you know, uh, farmers live pretty simple lives. You know, they're not millionaires. They 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 try and and, and squeeze you know a penny as far as they can go. And that's what happens with the gold. That's what you call gold is when you actually scrape that off the, the, the wax. So graveyard gold, that's where that came from. But, uh, that's, that's what our wax is called. And, uh, that's the, we sell that wax for 30 a pound. So Steve, which of these are you going to purchase for holiday presents? Uh, I'm just keep picturing like a, something smoked stout ghost pepper, chili, Haunted honey type of mixture that would just be amazing. I, I feel I want to throw a homebrew together and put a recipe together for it. Do it. I'll tell you one of my favorite honey beer recipes, and this is publicly available because it is um, public domain because of who basically created it. Is when Obama was in the White House, he created a couple of honey beer recipes with honey from the uh, apiaries that were on the White House grounds. So you can download it because it was government money that made those recipes. So I feel like we should get together and grab some haunted honey and throw that in and do a little <laughs> drink to some of the are ghosts you, of old presidents. Are you feeling the ghost pepper chili? I could, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like I'm, I'm honey, assuming. Honey, pepper, chili, like... <laughs> This, this is amazing. So I guess the next question for you, Craig, the last question, how do we order this amazing stuff? Obviously you've got a website, beeguys.com. Um, is it available on there or how do we, how do we get our hands on some? Well, you get in touch with, uh, like I said, we're a small company. We're working on a, uh, uh, an online web store that, that streamlines ordering and everything right now. But the way it works now is we have a, uh, we have a system where everybody messages us through our Facebook page. Uh, you can also text us or anything else, call us on our number, but everything's pretty much streamlined through Messenger, Facebook Messenger. Uh, you know, click on the message us button, 
and it comes directly to us with, with an order. Uh, we ask everybody to send their, their their name, their shipping address, their their PayPal information. We accept PayPal and Cash App uh, for the most part. That's the largest uh, thing that we can do. We can also run a credit or debit card, but we do that over phone call. Uh, and that's what I'm saying. We're trying to get an online store set up to make it to where all of this can be easily accessible to where you don't have to send a message or anything else like that. But uh, we want to make sure that everybody gets exactly what they want. Uh, the, every product is available right now. Uh, we're not running out soon of anything except for the, the haunted honeycomb. That's a, a pay as you go kind of thing. Sometimes we have it. Sometimes we don't. It all depends on how long ago we did removals from a graveyard. And it also depends on how much we got out of that. Sometimes you get none out, out of it. So, and sometimes you get 40 or 50 pieces. It, it all, it all depends. It really does. Uh, but you send us a message on, on uh, Facebook. It's uh, fa uh, you can look up B guys, guys with a Z LLC and uh, brings you to our Facebook page. We have all types of different cool things you can see on there. Videos uh, of removals that we do. We have funny little cartoons on there. Uh, it's really entertaining and it's really educational for somebody that would just be interested in it. Um, but give us a message. Tell us what you want. Tell us you want to place an order. We'll take everything down. You'll you know, we'll, we'll work it out on PayPal. Uh, we normally send out a PayPal request to you with the email you send us. And uh, that's it. Your, your order is going to go out within the next day. And uh, we've got right now, uh, matter of fact, once we're done, we're a small company. So once I'm finished here, we'll probably unpack it, I think, another 40 orders. And uh, that's got to be done tonight in order to go out tomorrow. And uh, I've, I've heard I've heard the ding go off on the phone four more times since we've been on here. So that might be <laughs> So I might have 44 orders to go by the time we're done. You know, so it, it's a never ending thing, you know, but that it, we, we're, we're very blessed to have it at this time of year because bees hibernate during the winter time, And this is our slow part of the year. It's normally a 24 hour operation, uh, seven days a week, eight days a week, however many days are in a week compared to what time of year uh, because we, we we don't ever stop working anytime between march and pretty much september uh october takes a little bit of a dip and it continuously goes down so but with the coronavirus times and also this part of the year we're very blessed in order to have this kind of in our corner right now uh to just help pay the bills just like everybody else to make ends meet uh, you know, we're never going to become millionaires or anything else as far as I know, but uh, I don't know if I'm ever going to get enough of this stuff to, in order to do that, but, but for right now, it's going very well, and uh, we're, we're very blessed to have it. All right. That is amazing. Thank you so much. So uh, B guys, obviously B guys.com where you can find them on Facebook at B guys LLC. Uh, I also want to once again, thank pumpkin pie boutique. Thank you so much, Tiffany, for introducing me to B guys. I definitely appreciate it. Uh, next week on our show, it's going to be the last show of 2020. And we're going to be bringing on Miami supply company who is an artist in the magic city and did some of the absolutely fantastic label art for beat culture, which is down by MIA. If you can find us on our Instagram page at Florida beer blog, you will see some of the artwork that I just posted. It's absolutely fantastic. And we're going to be talking to them to learn a little bit more about all of that. So on behalf of Steve and myself, thank you so much for joining us. If you do want to find us again, remember if you're listening to us live, you're obviously on our Facebook page. Um, if you're listening to us on YouTube after the fact, we are available at floridabeerblog.com on Instagram and Twitter at Florida beer blog. We're on Facebook at FL beer blog, and I am going to go see if I can order some honey. So thank you so much Craig, for coming on. We appreciate it. We will see you all next week. Drink Florida craft.